The 2020 census showed a substantial increase in the number of Americans who identify as multiracial. Percentage-wise, 10% of Americans identify as multiracial according to the 2020 census, and that is up from 3% in 2010. Sociologists attribute the swing in multiracial identification to the diversification of America and a reduced stigma associated with being multiracial. Also, accessibility of DNA testing kits has inspired people to explore their personal histories, deepening their understanding of racial identity. Here to discuss is Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies at Cal State, Los Angeles, Dr. Julianne Malvo. Julianne, so what gives here? This number skyrockets in 10 years from 3% to 10%. Is it just that everybody's doing 23andMe and they realize that, you know, I used to, I used to think I was white, but I'm not completely white? Um. I think that you have more people who are identifying as multiracial, but you also have more multiracial people. So in the past, I mean, as an example, uh, many white Puerto Ricans, would I, white complected Puerto Ricans would identify as white. Now they're discovering their mixed race backgrounds and they're choosing to identify as mixed. Uh, a lot of people just didn't do that in the past. Quite frankly, Charles, we're all mixed at some level, uh, but- um, Yes. But so, so, we, so we know that we have more identification, but the other thing really is it's much more uh, intermarriage, uh, much more, so, so that's the second piece of it. So it's two things going on. So, so, but the thing about multiracial is that more than any other racial category, it seems it is a choice, right? Because yeah. as you say, in, in the past, we would have chosen, Barack Obama chose to identify as black. Right? Kamala Harris chooses to identify as black. They're multiracial by every definition. They could yeah. easily have said, I'm a multiracial person, check that box and be done, or do a Tiger Woods and say, I'm Cablasian or whatever he used to say. <laughs> we, you know, but people are, people are choosing multiracial as a, as a racial category when, you know, when society would have otherwise in previous generations pushed them into one direction or another. What does this choosing of this particular hybrid classification say about political power and positioning of, uh, on the mm -hmm. racial scale? You know, that's really the question because even though it, it looks like we're so much more diverse, are we really? Um, when a white person marries a black, brown, Asian person, who do their children identify with and how do they go politically. And there's a study out that shows that, um, you know, people, there are many white Americans who are petrified over the notion of all these people of color overrunning, you know, our politics. But they're assuming then that all people of color are progressive, democratic, um, and that's just not the case. In addition, depending on who people identify with, if you identify with your white heritage, even though you're multiracial or you claim to be multiracial, but you identify with your daddy who's the gun-toting Republican uh, who won't wear a mask, as an example, that's probably how you're gonna vote. And so the political thing is a lot more tricky than it seems, and we can't just come jump to conclusions about what the country is gonna look like politically just because it looks this way uh, racially and ethnically. And how do you think you know the, the kind of revolt against the one-drop rule plays into this? Uh, previously, you had one drop of black blood and you don't care how you looked. You know, you right. could be one eighth, one thirty second black, they didn't care you were black. Uh, multiracial seems to be a, or could be a way of saying, yeah, but I don't want to overplay that part of my identity. This is a, I am somewhere in the middle. It, you know, is it an equivocation on the one drop rule of blackness overruling all other uh, uh, considerations in your racial identity? Well, it is an equivocation in many ways. And in, in addition to being an equivocation, it really is a dilution of, if you will, black power. Because once you say you're multiracial, that means you're not black, you're mixed. And if, you know, for a very long time, we were able to do political predictions based on race, this is going to become much more difficult. 
uh, as, as we look at this multiracial category. And let's not forget this category could mean anything. It could be white and black. It could be mm -hmm. Asian mm -hmm. and Mexican. It could, it, it could mean anything. So I would look, I would love to see more specificity in the data. Uh, basically, not, not necessarily for political predictions, but just so we know what's going on. One of the things, as an example, Charles, we know is that black women are only a third as likely to marry outside the race as black men are. Um, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if other ethnic women are in the same position. And these are some of the kinds of things that further explora exploration of the data would yield. And, and what impact might it have on funding? We, we know that uh, people use these census data around race to determine funding, particular programs, to particular municipalities and localities. What impact could this kind of uh, uh, rise of a kind of a hybrid racial identification have on those funding mechanisms? I think that people are going to have to ethnic people are going to have to make stronger cases for why they need and deserve money. We see that the Latino population, as an example, is now 20 percent, 19 percent. It's larger than the African-American population. That may mean some changes in the way that some foundations and others look at funding. Uh, does it mean less money for black people and more money for Latinos? I don't know. But I know that people are ethnic people are going to have to make strong cases for why they deserve funding. And I think that African-American people are going to especially find that some of their traditional funders may say, well, now we're going to go the Hispanic route. Now, we don't need to have any inter-ethnic conflict. We don't need to have a big fight over who's worse off. You know, we don't want to have a, the ethnic pity party in terms of, you know, who's worse off. But we do know that numbers do count and numbers do make a difference. Dr. Malvo, as always, thank you for joining us. Your Black History Moment is next.